we need to rise up in a new strain. Amen? We see what's taking place in the world today. We see what's taking place in our schools. Parents, if, 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 if you're not careful, uh, your, your kids are going to be learning some things that, that they shouldn't be taught. It's a good thing for you to question your kids, your grammar school kids, because uh, there's so much compromise, there's so much, much demonic things going on, and it's important that you and I uh, teach our children godly principles to where they could sit in a classroom and you tell them, it's all right if you get in trouble for saying, I don't want to be leave that. I don't want to do that. If your kid's going to the office and you get called in because they say that they're being rebellious because you're teaching about something and your kids don't want, you tell them, good for you, son. Good for you, daughter, because that's not what we believe. You are listening to me, but you need to understand that this is going on. And we as parents need to teach our kids godly principles. How We need to teach them how to live for God, and we need to teach them how to stand for righteousness. Amen? Uh, I put this together. Uh, uh, we've been teaching on families uh, in our church, and I want to minister on uh, uh, mentoring our children. And, of course, a very popular uh, uh, scripture that we use when we teach on children is Proverbs 22 verse 6 it says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he would not depart from it father in Jesus name uh, help us uh, bless us my God with your word this morning I pray that I decrease you increase my God anoint every heart to receive this morning in Jesus name we pray amen Train up your child, the Bible says. Uh, uh, to train up means to dedicate your child to God. Now, we know that in our churches we have baby dedications. Amen? What I like to do, aside from dedicating the baby, praying for the baby, what I like to do, I dedicate the parents. Because it's the parents that need to be dedicated. Can you say Amen? Uh, uh, really, because as, be as I talk, before I even pray for the baby, I ask the parent, do you agree to the best of your ability to teach your children, to guide your child and all that? Because I'm I, I need to dedicate them, okay, say amen? Because a lot of people bring their kids to church so that we could raise them. No, no, we, it doesn't work that way. We're just helping you raise your kids. Okay? We, we, we are helping by teaching, by t having classes for them. And, and, and uh, you know, I speak to the parents about their responsibilities. And I ask them, do you agree? Yes. I, that's a good answer. Amen? Because they need to agree. Uh, 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 you know, it's really the parent that has to dedicate themselves uh, uh, to teach uh, uh, our kids. Uh, it's the parent's responsibility to nurse and to uh, 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 discipline and to, and, and uh, God has entrusted us with our kids. We need to understand that. Many uh, years ago we started, uh, we had a school here at a church and before we could legally uh, do the school, we had to, my wife and I had to attend a, a class in Texas, I believe, is uh, School of Tomorrow. And they drilled us. It was like boot camp. Uh, they drilled us, man. A anybody who has a school probably been there, but I want to try something. Uh, we had to be there early. We were disciplined, just like the kids. Now we have to sit straight and, and we get the merits. Uh, they were teaching us how to teach. Okay? And, 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 um, but one of the scriptures that they really drilled 
us on with Proverbs 22, 6, on training up our child. And one of the things that I remember that they brought out about what, what, what we are to do in training our children is we need to, we need to wet their palate. In other words, we need to cause them to hunger for something. It's just like, oh man, you know, I know this isn't healthy, but I love when I drive by a Mexican restaurant and I could feel the refried, I could smell the refried beans. It, it, not the healthy virgin oil, but the manteca. <laughs> you know what I mean? The manteca, oh my God, you know. Like when you refry, refry beans with manteca, you could smell it. <laughs> I mean, I don't even have to be hungry, and all of a sudden, I am hungry. I want that. Well, that's how it's got to be with our kids. We got to create an aroma in them to where they are hungry for God. Where they are hungry, and, 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 uh, and you know what? Uh, 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 we need to do that, causing our children to hunger for the things of God versus the things of the world. In saying all that, I want to ask you, what do your kids hunger for the most? The world or for God? You know, shame on you if you leave your schools, if you leave your children home and not bring them to church because maybe we don't have something for them. Well, they're too young. They won't get anything out of church. They, got a, they get a lot of trash out of TV. They got a lot of trash out of movies. They got a lot of trash out, you know. Let them come and let them get some truth. Amen? Who's wetting their palate? What TV program is wetting their palate? Who are their friends? Parents, it's our responsibility. I don't even, I don't even trust church people. <laughs> I tell people, hey, just because they come to church and raise their hands, don't let them go to their house. That's the truth. I'm trying to teach you something. We are called to mentor our children. That's our job. We are called to be, to mentor our grandchildren. You need to understand that our children are going to be parents one day. And the only kind of parenting they're going to know is what we've taught them. And believe me, you don't have to say nothing. They're learning by how we live before them. I see my kids, they mimic me. Uh... They, they do things. They apply principles that they used to hate when they were young. <laughs> You're not going to do this. You're not going to go there. <laughs> All these things. I, I see them doing that. As a matter of fact, they're even stricter than me. <laughs> Psalms 27 verse 3 says this. Behold, children are a, a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Our responsibility as parents is to be a mentor, to train, to, to teach our children to do what? To hit the mark. To hit the mark. Uh, we, we, we are trained, to, uh, we are to train our children to, to hit the mark and, and let me tell you something about uh, uh, this scripture about hitting the mark. Uh, you know, in the old days, 
uh, they used to get twigs. And you know, a twig is not straight. But they would work that twig. They would take the leaves out. They would take the, uh, 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 you know, everything off. And, and the twigs were normally bent and crooked. But you know what? They straighten, strengthen, uh, they straighten it out. Uh, they straighten it out because you can't shoot a crooked arrow and hit a target. Can you say amen? So they made that as straight as they could. And then they, 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 they shot that arrow. They practiced, they shot that arrow to hit a bullseye. That's what we need to do. Our kids might have some crooked in them, but we have to strain them out. We have to strain out with a lot of love, a lot of patience, a lot of tenacity, uh, 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 you know, just, just, just straighten them out because we want our kids. Uh, did, did we get that image out there, the bullseye? We need, to, we need to train them to hit the target, okay? That, that's what it is that we need to do. Uh, and, and I understand this, okay? Maybe most of us weren't formally trained, okay? Uh, I, I know that I didn't grow up in a Christian home. Uh, I had good parents. They loved me. And, and, and my mother was the one that normally did more discipline. Uh, even my father, she disciplined my father. <laughs> when my mother was mad, we all ran. My father too. <laughs> okay? But they didn't have a salvation experience like I do. But they loved me. I knew that. I knew that. I, I got some good things from them. I, I, I got some good habits from my father. My father was a worker. He provided. And I learned that, and I'm like that. My mother was loving and giving and compassionate. I got that from her. But at the same time, there's things that I lacked. And I forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> oh, okay. Being properly trained, okay? Okay. Uh, uh, we, we weren't maybe properly trained and, and, and on how to mentor anyone, mentor our children. But, but thank God that we're saved in, in our Heavenly Father. We have His Word. He speaks to us. He speaks to us. And, and just like right now, we have the awesome privilege of, of, of being in conferences, being in revivals, having pastors where we hear the Word of God. Our Father is mentoring us. There's some crooked in us. And, and He's making us straight so we could hit a bullseye. So we could hit a bullseye. So we could hit a bullseye as parents. So now we could take arrows from our quiver and we could, and we could train them. And they may not hit the mark at the first, they might not hit the mark all the time, but we need to recognize that. Then we need to work with them so that we could get good, so that they could hit the mark when it's time for them to take off and, and, and be a mentor to their family. Are you with me? We may live in, in the world, but we are not part of the world. Let me give you some statistics here. Researchers at John Hopkins University reported that 30 years ago, the greatest fears of grade school children were animals, being in a dark room, high places, strangers, loud noises. Today, kids are afraid of divorce, nuclear war, cancer, pollution, being mugged. We need to understand what our kids fear. And we need to mentor them to trust God. To trust God. Ninth, a 19th century Scottish preacher asked 253 friends of his at what ages were they converted. And this is what he discovered. Under 20 years of age, 138 of those 253 were converted. At, at age, uh, uh, under age 20, okay? Between 20 and 30, 85 of them got converted. 
between 30 and 40, 22 of them got converted. Between 40 and 50, four of them. Before, between 50 and 60, three of them. Between 60 and zero, one. Over 70, zero of his friends. Okay, this is what I want you to see. That the older our kids get, the harder it's going to be to reach them. We have to do it now. We have to do it now. We need to pay attention. We can't wait too long. Time is passing us by. Time is passing us by. When Pastor Robert was preaching, and I know I was going to come up next, it reminded me of the old days when there was only about three, four pastors, uh, uh, just us, and we would be doing all the discipleship. We would be uh, following one another. We would be scrambling around at discipleship. Man, time flies. <laughs> We are still following one another, but man, we, we got old quick, like, like, like a week ago. <laughs> time flies, church. Time flies. You need, to, you need to take the opportunity, the advantage of the time that your kids are with. If, if I could do it over again, if I could do it over again, I, I, I would uh, uh, just mentor my kids more, spend more time just uh, just uh, around me that that's what I'm doing with my Alex here and my Lisa you know just 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 involved in the things of God because you know what this is the only life that's worth living before we head home okay say amen we need to teach our kids that as tiring as it may be we need to do our best to mentor our kids well they are still young. I'm going to close this uh, with seven steps to effectively mentor your kids that I came across as I was preparing for this. Seven steps that we could, that, that we need to take to mentor our kids. First of all, character. We're going to need character. It's crucial that as a mentor, you are a person of character, integrity. Remember, what you are, you're going to impart. Your character is who you are when no one's looking. We know that. We could put on a good show. We could look good. We could pretend we could do all those things. But you know what? That's not you. That's more your personality. But your character is who you are who you know you are when ain't nobody around. What you watch, what you think, what you listen to. What you look at on Facebook. Let me tell you something. Nobody has to see that, but you will impart that. It's very important that you're living what you teach when mentoring your children. Charles Spurgeon said these words. A man's life is always more forcible than his speech. When men take stock of him, they reckon his deeds as dollars and his words as pennies. If his life and doctrine disagree, the mass of onlookers accept, uh, accept his practice and reject his preaching. People learn more by who, how we live than what we say. Amen? Another thing is we're going to need to effectively mentor our kids is we need commitment. Being a mentor isn't about being a promise maker. It's about being a promise keeper. Amen? Don't ever tell your kids you're going to do something if, you're, if you don't do it. We need to be a, a, a promise uh, keeper effective mentors keep their commitments to their mentees okay keep your word to your children especially when it comes to negative consequences in other words if you say you are going to punish them when they break the rules you need to punish them when they break the rules uh, and, and I shared this with the church that I, I remember my son Art. Uh, my son Art used to test me, um, uh, and, and we used to live in LA uh, on this street. And it wasn't a busy street, but it was a street. And my son Art, you know, you're a little kid, just 
run out there, man. And, and you know, that, didn't pay attention to, and, 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 and I seen him out the window. I said, all right, come here. And, and I took him in the house, and I said, listen, I, 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 I don't want you to get hurt. And, and, and I don't want you to be running in the street. And I'll, and I'll tell you something, if, if you do it again, I'm going to spank you. You understand? And a lot of time I ask them, repeat what I said. <laughs> do you understand? I'm going to spank you. So what happened is I'm in the front room again. He's playing. He, boom, runs in the street again. Like if I never had that conversation. So I bring him in the house. I said, Art, why do you want me to spank you? I don't want you to spank me. <laughs> I said, yes, you do. I told you that if you run in the street, I'm going to spank you. I didn't say, I'm going to let you go this time. No, I spanked him. And I don't know if he did it again because time flies, you know, but... <laughs> What you're trying to say, what I'm trying to say is you need to keep your word. Your children must know that you say what you mean and you mean what you say. You can say amen. And, and not only that, not only in the negative, but also in the positive. If, 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 if you know, if, if you do this, if you do that, you know what? Uh, I, I'm going to do this for you. You're, you're going to earn this. You're gonna, and, and when they do it, you, you, you do what you said you were going to do. They need to know that you keep your commitment. You must become one of the most reliable, dependable people they know. In other words, my dad is not messing around versus he ain't going to do anything. I ain't going to do anything. I heard people say that, hey, aren't you going to get in trouble? Oh, they don't care. No, they need to know we can't do this. Another thing is you need to be connected. There needs to be connection. In other words, uh, uh, effective mentors connect for respect. In other words, mentors do not demand respect from others. They earn it. Mentors earn respect through, honest, uh, uh, through honesty and transparency with their children. And, 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 and you, you, you know what you need to do with your kids for them to respect you and say, my dad knows what he's talking about. Sometimes you need to be open to them and, and share your story. Uh, I know my kids, I, I don't know if they still think this, but uh, I know uh, they told me, you're rich. Because, you know, that whenever they, they, <laughs> they need money, uh, they come to us. They come to my wife. You're You're rich. You know, we, we live in a decent house. We uh, live in a decent, uh, I mean, drive a decent car. We, 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 you know, they see that. But you see, we, we tell them it wasn't always like this. You know, we, we come from the barrio. Well, okay, ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> we know ghetto, you know what I mean? <laughs> We've been ghetto. <laughs> but they need to know that it wasn't always like this. They need to know that the relationship that, that me and their mom have was not always like this. We, the, we, they, they need to know that what they see was not like that. But we struggled and then we got saved and then we trusted and we were faithful and and this is why what what they see this is how it happened so what we're trying to teach them is listen when we talk to you listen to us because we know what we're saying and we know what we want for you you see so you need to connect with your kids so it leads me to number five communication it's not what we say or what we meant to say but what's actually understood in other words effective mentors uh, lead by listening and not lecturing 
lot of times we don't he- he- listen. We don't listen. Let them talk. Let them explain. Let them share with you. I- I've been guilty of this. Man, I get angry and I come. I have a preconceived understanding, I think, of what happened. One time, uh, Alex, this was Alex. <laughs> now, Alex, okay, you read what you saw. Alex, <laughs> Alex, my, 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 my little grandson, Xander, God gave Xander to Alex to teach him what he did to me. <laughs> Xander, he's he's a miniature Alex. Man, Alex, I could not get him to sleep. I told my wife, I got an idea. He's hyper. I got an idea. I'm going to tire him out when we go home. So I said, okay, Alex, let's do exercise, okay? So, man, we go home, and we're doing exercise and all that, and, and now I'm tired. <laughs> and I said, I said, I got to go back. Oh, come on, Dan. <laughs> I, I said, oh, man. Get, <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> but anyway, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> That's why I stick to my notes. Oh, okay, listening, okay. You got to listen to them. Uh, uh, Alex was playing something upstairs. I just heard something and little music and all that. And what are you listening to? We were on our way to school. And he says, a uh, storybook, Dad. You know this story now? I felt so bad. So bad. Let me tell you something. Our kids are not always doing something wrong. Not always. <laughs> Most of the time, okay? <laughs> but not always. It's your job to be understood, though. And, also, and it's also your job to make sure that uh, you understand them. And number six, uh, Effective mentoring involves coach, coaching. You can only take your kids as far as you've traveled. So as a mentor, you need to show and demonstrate to your children how you got there. Okay, uh, Show them what, pri- what potholes and pitfalls to avoid. Uh, help them learn from your experience. Okay, and, and, and we know that we've been through some things that we don't want them to go through. And when we see, recognize, when we recognize something in their life that we did, it's, it's, it's good to be sensitive and just call them in with love and once again, talk to them and tell them, listen, I know where this is going to lead you. I've been there. And, and you don't need to do that. And let me tell you something. Sometimes our kids will learn their own way. That's fine. And, 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 and it's not our job to say, I told you so. They already know that. You just need to be there for them. And guide them one last one, and I'm finished. We need to be consistent when we mentor. If commitment gets you started, consistency keeps you going. Okay? It's one thing to, to get started. It's another thing to continue doing what you're supposed to do. Effective, an effective mentor stays in constant contact with whomever they're mentoring. Uh, mentoring is about building and maintaining relationships. And, and this is the principle that could be applied to mentoring uh, pastors as we mentor our uh, people in church. There's so much... There, there's no such thing as an effective part-time mentor. We need to stay with it. Uh, uh, you, 
you may not be able to do everything for your children, but they should know that you always will be there if they need you this morning. Well, that's all I have on mentoring. I hope that was helpful. You received that this morning. Praise God. Let's give God praise. Thank you, Jesus.